Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Brewington, and welcome to The Actor's Choice, brought to you by Photography as an Art, Bobby Brandman, Master Photographer located at 1307 North San Fernando Boulevard, Burbank, California. Attorney Ron Irwin's book, Haiku, Strive, Passion, Heart. Author Larry Buford's book to the future, Time Travel, Message in a, in a Capsule. State Farm agent Carla Green, and veteran actor Rob Brownstein, actor training school, and actor space. Roll it. You know how long it's been since the Bow Wow Club was all together, the five of them? Almost 20 years, Kurt, I know. That's right, more than 20 years. <laughs> Look what I got. I know what you got. Well, humor me then. I ain't got time to humor you. I am trying to cook some of this food now, so I don't have to cook it tomorrow. Because if I don't cook it now... Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest today has tremendous talent. Everything he touches turns to success. He's a multiple award-winning actor, director, producer, playwright, and screenwriter. He's received numerous awards and nominations for his work on the screen, the stage, and other outlets. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Levy Lee Simon. Levy Lee, God bless you, my brother. Good to see you, good to see you. Oh man, we waited for this day. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Levy, of course, welcome to the Actors' Choice. Uh, You've done so many projects, my brother. Let's start with, where did you come from? Let's start there. <laughs> you know, um, I'm from Harlem, USA. Excuse me, sir. Could you speak a little loud? I missed Harlem, that last word. Harlem. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, someone told me I once wore it on my chest like a badge, and I do. You should. You should. I'm very, very, very proud of where I'm from. Mm -hmm. uh, and not that the, the new Harlem into the old Harlem. I grew up in the old Harlem. <laughs> Got you. I say that because I was born in the old Harlem Hospital. Uh, oh, yeah. I grew man. up in Harlem. I went to school in Harlem, St. Charles Romeo, St. Thomas yeah. Hospital School, you know, yeah. did all that stuff. Uh, there's no place like Harlem to me. No, no place like home, man. No home. <laughs> so you left Harlem. Mm -hmm. You went to school in Iowa. What was it like coming from Harlem and going to Iowa? Well, you know, I, I, I went to Iowa later. I went to Ch Cheney. State, the oldest black college in the country, in right. Pennsylvania. We got my got my bachelor's degree, and then I was out of school for a long time. And the opportunity that I wasn't really looking for came up for me to go to Iowa, and you know it's like one of those things. What what am I going to be doing in Iowa? And I got there, and um, I got a I got a fellowship um, through the great playwright Lee Blessing. And, um, you know, and I got there and I, I had been traveled all over by this time, but I never was in a place where I was going to be for a long time with so many blonde haired, blue eyed people at one time, you know, and it was, it was a, yeah, it was a bit of a culture shock, but it was the best move that I ever made, uh -huh. um, you know, in, in reference to the, my life and the growth of Levy Lee, you right. know, yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of what I tell my students, the three E's, education, exposure, and experience. You got to get out there. You gotta gotta, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You exactly. got to get out. There's a story you're talking about, uh, Cheney. Uh, there was a, you had a girlfriend who purchased some tickets for you to see a play for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. There's a, <laughs> a character in there, the lady in red, who performed a piece about Toussaint Late Overture, and it inspired you to learn more about the Haitian revolt. Can you talk about that briefly, Cheney? Yeah, well, God bless Sue. I mean, hopefully, maybe she's watching. We're still friends after all of these years. She lives down in Florida. And, you know, we went to a Broadway play, and and he, the lady in red talked about, she had this monologue about Toussaint Louverture, and I didn't know who he was, and I felt bad about it because I pride myself in knowing my history, you know. And so I went to, uh, there's a liberation bookstore up in Harlem, and I went there, I found this, I wasn't even looking for it actually, I, you know, but you know, sometimes when you put the energy out, it comes back, whether you know it or not. And I found this book 
the Black Triumvirate. And I opened it and I read the first page and I was hooked. And it was all about the um, the Haitian Revolution with, with Toussaint, Desiree, and Christophe. Fascinating history. And I wasn't even writing then, Ron. I was I was a you know, young actor, you know, trying to make my bones. And uh, and I and I read I read the read it, read the book and it was like, you know, this will make a great play or movie someday, not knowing that later I would be the one to write it. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got that fellowship to the University of Iowa, if I may, when, um, I, I had a, uh, they, my Matt, my, um, my su su supervisor interviewed me and, uh, well, not interviewed, but he said, he said, you know, after your three years, you have to write your thesis play. And I said, I, I, I know what it's, it's going to be. And uh, it's going to, I'm going to write an epic drama about the Haitian Revolution. His eyes got big. He said, that's a big undertaking. I said, I'm going to do it. And <laughs> it's, it's been done. <laughs> it's been done. Done well. You've had a, so, how many plays have you done so far? Um, sometimes it's hard for me to count because I have plays that have been produced. I've had over 32 productions. Um, but plays that have been produced, and then I have plays that I've written that haven't been produced. And then there's some stuff that's still in the oven, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Some people haven't done one and you've done all these, my goodness. You know, when I went to Iowa, I mean, again, it was something that fell into my lap and I figured I would be there for three years because it's a three year program. And um, I thought I'd write a play a year and we just sounded reasonable. <laughs> and I ended up writing 17 plays. In, in five years, 17 plays. There's something I need to tell you about myself. Uh oh. <laughs> I have a bone to pick with actors and uh, actresses. Those and, who watch this on a regular basis, they know what I'm talking about. The actors and what, well, I missed that last part. Okay, I, I have a bone to pick with actors and actresses. And actresses, okay. Mm -hmm. I get, they can get in there too. What yeah. I'm talking about is that they come here to Hollywood. I'm here in Hollywood and I wanna be a star. Well, mm -hmm. but I'm here to do film and I'm here to do television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about plays? You want to do some plays? Oh, no, I don't do plays. That's not me. And that's the bone I got to pick. Well, you know, I mean, L.A. is a film and TV town. And yeah. and I was I was actually, to be honest, I was actually surprised by the amount of theater that was going on in L.A. when I got here. However, <laughs> I remember, and, and, and uh, you know, I don't want to sound like whatever, but I remember we had auditions for the Bow Wow Club, the first production in 2006 that was done here in LA. Yes. And I was surprised about how many actors came to the audition who were acting as if they were playing to a camera or, yeah. a, a, you know, a t for TV or film. Right. I'm like, no, this, this is theater. You know, you got to act for more than your your neck up. You know, <laughs> I mean, I say what's, this going the rest of the, what's going yeah. on with the rest of the body? You know, I mean, yeah. you know, and so uh, I was surprised um, that about the amount of theater and you know the quality. You know, it's catch as catch can, but um, and that's my opinion. You know, some people may differ. Um, but I am, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'll say this with a bit of pride, you know, I, I was born, you know, and raised in, in New York city theater, you know, I'm, I'm a theater guy first, always, you know, I love film and I mm -hmm. love TV and, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to excel in that as well, but where my bread is buttered, where my soul is buttered is a theater, you know, that's, that's, that's the root of everything I do. And, you know, I find that for me, that the best actors, you know, and actresses, you know, have their roots in theater, you know, because, uh, you know, a stage actor can do anything. Right. A stage actor can act for film, for TV, for stage, you know, but a, a film actor, and there's nothing wrong with being a film actor, that's what you're right. doing. You know, but when that film actor has to step on the stage, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, bring it now, you know, and sometimes it's, it's you know, just two different mediums, you know. Yeah. Hope they're listening to what you're saying and take it in for sure. <laughs>
Really, one of your early projects was a movie called The Guest of Temple Park West with actor John Michael Jones. Yeah, man. Um, I was, we were just talking a little bit earlier, and um, uh, it's a long history with that. But, but you yeah. know, in New York City, the Hadley Players produced the first production, which was with the first theater company that I worked with. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I was in my 20s, and my one of my mentors, I have a number of them, but one of my mentors, Gertrude Jeanette, who passed away last year at the age, no, two years ago, at the age of 106, um, uh, introduced me, you know, to theater, basically. And when I was a young, young pup, and then to have the guests at Central Park West done in her theater and to do well as it did and win a bunch of Adelco awards was probably, not probably, is one of the highlights of my, my career. Um, she was just so happy, you know, here she was like, you know, at that time, I think 99 and she was in tears, you know, and that, that was just a big, big, big thing in my heart. Um, the play itself, um, you know, involves a homeless guy that shows up at the home of a, a Nobel Peace Prize winning professor. We find out that they have a long history, you know, that's unfolded through the course of the play. And then by the end of the play, um, we realize this homeless guy who happens to be, he has this scintillating mind and genius and, um, uh, he has a mission and he's going up to blow up a statue that sat in front of um, uh, the Museum of Natural History. And that was my first attempt, you know, um, to speak to all of the historical statues that are around that have, you know, a, a racist people, um, you know, for, to celebrate, I guess, I don't know. Um, Anyway, um, the, the, the caveat, the beautiful thing is I wrote that play and well, that production was done in 2007 or eight. And um, in 2020, um, earlier this year, the museum announced that they were taking that statue down. And that was like another one of those moments. You said, wow, you know, someone's paying attention. I mean, not, not that they're taking it down because of me, I'm not saying that but I do feel like I have a little piece of it, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, um, and you know, because that's what we do as artists, I think as writer is, is to, and you know, Ron, you know, you put stuff under that microscope and, and so other people, audience comes in, they see it, they can look at it and walk out, hopefully wanting to talk about it because you've examined something you know, uh, no, yeah, I'm not going to offer any, any, any answers, but, yes. you know, take a look at this, yes. you know, in a way that you may never have looked at it before. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel like every, every audience member that comes into a theater, it's my hope that they are different when they leave, that they have a different perspective on some aspect of their life when they leave. That is my hope, you know, with my work. In 2014, you appeared on a TV show called Actors Day in L.A. with a dear, dear friend of mine. You know her, Pepper J. There she is. You know L.A. that's 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 that, that, that's wrong. That's not me. <laughs> not, well, we, okay, I know not you, but I'm just saying that's the only one they had. That was yeah, the no, 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 no. Um, listen, you know I've gone to that IMDb page. I don't uh -huh. know how many times. And tried to like correct that thing, and and it so just, that's not you. No, oh. it never gets corrected. And I'm like, I know Pepper, I know who she is. But you we were there. Never, we never worked together, yeah. you know. And that picture of that person who was supposed to be me, I'm like, that's not me. So and and again, I've gone, I've gone, I've gone. So I get, I get it. And you're doing your research that 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 happened. I'm, you know. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You also did a play, we don't have a photograph on it. It's called God, the Crack House and the Devil. That was a very important thing for you. Well, that put that play was the first play that put me on the map in this country as a as a legitimate playwright. In my very first play that was done at Circle Repertory Theater in New York City back in 1994. And it, it, it was, well, Circle Repertory was like the longest running off-Broadway theater in New York for many, many years. 
and uh, you know, Lamford Wilson, Marshall Mason, Tanya Barrison, Michael Warren Powell, all these amazing artists. And um, when we did the play, you know, I, I felt like uh, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know if I was even a playwright or not at that time because I was primarily an actor only. And uh, we did the play and it got like this major, major response. Yes. All of the actors that were in that play, not to name drop, because I know you don't like that, but all the actors that were in the play mm -hmm. um, have gone on to be major, major stars. And they were all just in their infancy then. And there's a cast of 12. And of the 12, 10 of them have gone on to be like major. And, and that I am very, very, very proud of too. Yeah. Here's a project that you did this year, both as the writer and the performance called The Odyssey. We have a little uh, yeah uh, yeah i mean funny. i I've, I've been working on my um my memoir for yes. uh for a while now and um i finally got to a place where it's going to be published uh hopefully it'll be out uh before the end of the year maybe even before november okay. uh, and then i have a solo show based on the odyssey uh which is stories about my life spoken word um some storytelling in monologues and that is going to happen november 15th live stream from the white fire theater a whole bunch of information on it on the net on my page and all that yeah and you also did a pre uh did a presentation for the last revolutionary this past thursday that that happened <laughs> yeah so so john marshall jones and i who i've partnered with on many projects over yes. the years and um you know, we did, we put, made the movie. First we did the play, then we made the movie, The Last Revolutionary, which came out 2017, premiered at the Pan-African Film Festival. We did a bunch of festivals that year. I got on Amazon, you know, um, got a distributor. And yeah. it, was, it was just a, a major, major success for us artistically. You know, what, what the piece is talking about is a, a revolutionary stuck in the past of the 60s only to find out that basically, and they think he's going crazy, he, he you know, and but basically all the stuff, same stuff is happening today. And he's ready to go out and, you know, do some stuff and, and, and this reference made to a lot of things that are happening right in the world today, up to the white militias coming in to the governor, trying to take care of the governor and all that. It's actually already in that play, you know, in, in that story. So I'm, I'm uh, very, very like, Try to keep my finger on the pulse, right? <laughs> you know, the business of showbiz, what's that been like for you? Um, it's, it's very interesting because there's no really like pat answer. It's, it's, it's showbiz is all over the place, you know? And for me personally, um, I think a lot of people start out, you know, wanting to be a star and wanting to have you know, all of the, all of the lights and cameras and action and all that stuff. And, and I don't think I've ever been one of those people. Um, yeah, I'm in LA because, you know, I, I, I optioned the screenplay. I came out here. Um, I had an agent once that I used to tell, I used to say, I'm an artist, I'm an artist. And she said, I wish you would stop saying that. I need you to want to be a star, you know? Yeah. <laughs> get that in your head, you're a star. I was like, no, I'm an artist. She said, no, artists don't get paid. Stop it, we want to get paid, <laughs> you know? And, 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 you know, I'm an artist, you know, I mean, even, even no matter how much I tell myself, you know, you know, how much I scream at myself in my head, I'm an artist first. I have to be an artist first because otherwise then I won't do the work that I won't put the work out that I, I can say I'm happy to have my name behind it. You know, I never want to get to that place where I'm producing, putting stuff out there for money, but I'm embarrassed because, oh my God, I, I you know, no, I want to stand by my work. Right. Speaking of business, I heard over the weekend that Broadway is going to be closed until April of next year. Right. That. Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, and that that's, you know, that's a hard thing. I mean, when the, when the year came in 2020, you know, like everybody else, I was so hopeful. It was, it was like, it was, um, it looked like it was going to be a great year, not, not just in the average year. I mean, I had a lot of stuff was lined up 
outside of LA. Uh, I was going to, every spring I go to Omaha, I do a workshop, but I'm gonna be acting in a play there, but a wonderful new play. And uh, that has a lot of, well, it was gonna be done elsewhere in, in the country. And then um, I was gonna be in New York and then I was gonna come back here and we were actually planning to do a revival production of the Bow Wow Club. Yeah. All of that fell through. And, um, but living in quarantine and being in COVID, uh, you know, I've been locked down like a lot of us, you know, been home, been focusing on, you know, being, being productive and so far so good, you know? Before we run out of time, I got a couple of photos and a bit of your tape that I know you're gonna like. <laughs> this person up there, 2017. Uh, this is a script reading uh, done here in Los Angeles called Smell the Power. Now, there you are getting a little appreciation there. But no, can you get back up below? This is not the one. Uh, this one is uh, uh, number, 20, number 16. Tony, number 16. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut. Yeah, exactly. There you are. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. one more after that. Yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. With my yeah. man Derek Sean there. Derek Sean, oh, yeah. No. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Smell the Power is one of those plays that I don't feel has gotten its 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 just due yet. Um, yes. But in that reading, we had, you know, Ella Joyce and Denise Douse, um, uh, Tiffany Phillips, and, and we had a great cast, Eddie Goins, we, and it, we had a great cast, and it was a great turnout. Um, you know, we do these... Uh, backers reading so yeah. we can get uh theaters and producers you know interested in doing a particular play okay then can you go to the next one tony there you go getting some wrecking we just showed that one getting some recognition okay there's, <laughs> there's a picture i was looking for that's a good friend of mine and yours yes Eva yes, yes it's eva yeah yes. good lady very, very good lady. Very she's good. She's watching lady. now. So if you want to wave your hand at her, she's hey, watching. Hey, yeah, what's up? What's up? <laughs> okay. Can you go to the next picture, Tony? Here's my here's a good one for you. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Would you believe? Uh, Ruby Simon, hard at work. Inspired <laughs> <laughs> me. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Wow. Okay. Tony, if you could back it up just a little bit to that uh, video, the last video we had number 16B. I think you're gonna like this one because this is something <laughs> you wrote and perform. We have we have a moment. We uh -oh. can go ahead and get that in before we get you out. Okay. JB. Wow. Here come, here come. Oh, I am a black man. See me. I am the language I do not speak, but hear me. I am rivers of emotion, feel me. I am the fruit of life, taste me. I am the earth. Touch me. I am song and dance and tribal rhythms, the heartbeat of life, know me. I am the man that stood on auction blocks, head high, teeth bared, stripped naked, so the I Yeah, oh, marvelous, marvelous. <laughs> I hear you. you're going to do a memoir. That's the last question I got for you. Yeah, the memoir is, uh, is due out um, hopefully before the end of November, definitely before the end of the year. And, uh, you know, just some stories about uh, my odyssey, I call it, you know, just like the Greek odyssey, Odysseus and everything. And, uh, you know, we've all had ups and downs in life, trials and tribulations. Yes. And it's about my life, you know, and growing mm -hmm. up in Harlem and, and then going off from there as a grown man out into the world, pursuing this career, you know, living as a black man in America, all of that, you know, and, um, yeah, a little nervous about it, you know, but, uh, you know, we, hey, you know, this is what life is all about, right, man? How can you know? we get a copy of it? Um, well, it's going to be aired. I'll have to get it to you, all that information to you, because I actually don't have that yet. Okay. But uh, it will be, you know, again, hopefully be out before the end of November. Maybe leave. Break a leg, my brother. Oh, Break man. A thank leg. You. This has been great, Ron. Thank you so much. You only gave us 24 minutes, but hey, we want to thank you very much for being here today. We really appreciate you being here. Best thank you, man. You. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. My pleasure. Stay safe. Yeah. yeah you do the same. You do the same. Yeah, okay. All right. This is the Actors' Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. The studio of Harvey Brandon Photography is an Art. Proud to offer you a $100 discount off any photo package valued at $300 or more. Now, Harvey has been in the uh, 
business for a year and he certainly knows how to take care of his passengers. Now, so please give him a call today at 818-954-9294. That's 818-954-9294. You'll be glad you did. And by the way, please tell Harvey that you heard about his offer right here on the Action's Choice. Haiku, style, passion, heart. It's the latest release from author and attorney Ron Irwin. Now, the book was inspired by the author, his first exposure to haiku well over a half century ago. This experience produced within him a deep passion to experience Asia, which he later did as a U.S. Marine. The book is available in paperback at lulu.com. Now, Irwin says he'll give 20% of net book sales split evenly between the veterans of foreign wars and Vietnam better, uh, veterans of America. Book to the Future, Time Travel, Message in a Capsule. It's a book by author Larry Buford. It's a historical and faith-based account of how what we do and follow today will affect us tomorrow. The author also calls it an adventure for those who want to travel back through time. The book is now available in paperback from the 1795. Hey, get your copy today. And now a word from State Farm agent, Carla Green. Roll it. Let me ask you something. What do you see when you look at your home and your car? Do you see a bundle? A combo deal. That's how other insurance companies see them. But a State Farm agent sees so much more. Because a State Farm agent sees your home and your car as more than just four walls and four wheels. They see the things you've worked really hard for. So why not give them the protection they deserve? Let me help you with that. Give me a call. State Farm agent Carla Green, 213-239-9675. I look forward to speaking with you. Okay, Ron. Thanks, Carla. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. For more information, call 213-239-9675. That's 213-239-9675. Attention all actors. An actor special provides classes and private coaching by veteran actor Rob Brownstein. An actor space of Thursday night classes for the working actor. Tuesday night foundation technique classes for early career actors. Now, the idea here is to build on each actor's strength and who you are to help refine and reimagine your acting and your career. So, for more information, contact class at robbrownstein.com. That's class at robbrownstein.com. Or just give them a call, 323-646-1268, 323-646-1268. Thank you. The African-American Film Marketplace and S.E. Manley Short Film Showcase cordially invites you to a great day in Black Hollywood, a virtual select for the iconic film director, Michael Schultz. Now, the event takes place on Saturday, October 24th at 3 p.m. for a screening of the film, Cooley High, and then at 5.30, a salute to the genius of Michael Schultz. For more information, call 310-284-3170. That's 310-284-3170. Thank you. And finally, if you have a product or a service or upcoming event that you'd like to see advertised on this program, please call 323-533-1036. That's 323-533-1036. Our prices are very affordable. Thank you. This is the Actors' Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. Roll it. today is an actress, writer, and director. She's a founding member and co-artistic director of the IAMA Theater Company. She's got nearly 50 IMDb actors credits on both television and film. And get this, she's a graduate of NYU's Tisch School of the Arts. Great school. I was in New York City. Remember that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephanie. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Wouldn't have it anyway. I love that uh, publicist of yours. Oh, Lucy's the best. Oh, yeah. Only the business public can do it anytime for me. Absolutely. Anytime. But thank you for coming into the Actors' Choice. Marvelous work that you've done, my dear, over the last years. 
what stands out the most in your mind about your career? Oh, wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that question. Um, I think I think I would definitely have to say right now it's, um, you know, being a, a founding member and um, co-artistic director for I Am A Theater Company. Uh, we started this company, it was a group of us that moved out to LA from New York. We, a bunch of us had gone to NYU together and we came out here as just young artists looking to make theater and we didn't really know what to do in LA. We didn't have iPhones yet. We didn't know how to make movies. We just knew how to make theater. And so we got together and started this incredible company. Um, and it really gave each and every one of us a platform to help um, shepherd our careers individually. And 13 years later, we're still you know, together making the same kind of exciting theater. Wow. You didn't hear what I said to the previous guest about the, uh, the bone that I have to pick with actors and actresses. Oh, please yeah. tell me. <laughs> well, you know, in this town, a lot of people, I want to be a star, you know. Sure. Spell star backwards. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's okay. pretty good. So I they like want to be one of them stars. Okay, that's fine. All right. They don't want to do no stage. They want to do just film and, and, and TV. Uh, no stage. That's Well, that was never my story. And I also never really wanted to be a star. I just wanted to be a working actor and a, and a working director. And I wanted to run a theater company and make art. Um, and I think LA gets a bad rap when it comes to theater. I think LA actually is on the rise to become like the next great theater city. And I think so many people don't know that. Um, and I've been really lucky to be welcomed into this community. And IAMA has gotten to, you know, really be at the, the center of all this exciting work. And I'm really proud of this theater community and where it's headed, you know, where it's been and where it's going. Yes. I guess you heard over the weekend that uh, Broadway is going to stay shut until April of next year. I did. And I'm not surprised, to be honest. I. I think it's, I kind of think it's silly that they keep pushing the date. I feel like it should just be until we know. And um, I think that the future for at least a scale of Broadway of being in these huge theaters indoors, um, it's about risk and it's about personal risk for people of how they feel, what they feel safe to do. And I think until we have, for me personally, until we have a vaccine that has a little bit wider distribution, I understand why people aren't going to feel safe and why producers don't want to risk that. Um, so it wasn't like, I wasn't surprised. It didn't bum me out in a way that I think a lot of people have, or like took it as a huge hit. We at IAMA have already postponed all of our in-person producing until at least the fall of 21. So for me, that didn't change anything. That's just where we are. <laughs> where we are? Americans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your first IMD actress credit came in 2002 with the role of the girl in the short <laughs> film. And here it goes. Nihilistic chick. Nihilistic chick. Yeah, that was Say that five favorite. times, please. Say that five times. <laughs> Nihilistic. Yeah. Oh, God. I haven't thought about that one in a long time. Um, yeah, that I was still in college. I was still at mm. NYU, and um, I was on the summer break, I believe. I was actually doing summer stock at the Main Street Theater in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. And I was, uh, I think it was my day off. I drove into New York City. I, w I think we were in production for either Godspell or Fiddler on the Roof, something very American like that. Yes. Uh, and I went to New York and had this audition and uh, they're not, they don't really encourage us to work professionally while we're in school, when, um, while we're like in session. But uh, I, you know, being in New York, you're just sort of dying to be working. So I went in for this thing and auditioned and it's a, it's a really cute little, well, it's not cute. It's, it's a kind of, a dark little short film where I had no dialogue, but all this fun action. And it was all centered around me. And that was really my first real experience being on camera. Um, and it was a blast. It was fun. Oh, I forgot to ask you, where are you from? I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. PA. Yeah, I'm a PA girl. All I'm right. like, come on, PA, do the right thing right now. <laughs> do the right thing. you got only a couple weeks. <laughs> Thank you for that plug. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fast forward to 2010, when you appeared in a TV series for a green card in the role of Megan. Now, you also picked up, ready for this, ladies and gentlemen, a first IMDb producer, writer, and costumer credit. <laughs> All in one key. <laughs> Whoosh, got it all. I don't know why that costumer credit. That should not have been in there. <laughs> we, actually did. <laughs> we actually did. So that's a that's a web series that I created with uh, my old writing partner, Clark Hardy, yes. who's genius. And 
we had this ridiculous idea about, we wanted to create a Will and Grace kind of TV show. And we just thought um, mar- green card marriage, we, we actually knew somebody who'd gone through the process and we thought it was kind of hilarious. Uh-huh. Um, so we put this thing together. Um, we shot a full season. Uh, it was it was a really exciting um, thing. It got us the attention of an executive at Darren Star Productions, who we started working on, collaborating with that show. Um, and then, and actually, our costume designer on this web series is this uh, woman named Michaela. Um, she's Michaela Erlander. She's actually gone on to become a huge celebrity fashion stylist. Like one of her, I mean, she's. She's uh, styled many, many celebrities at the Oscars and Golden Globes, and she's brilliant. And this was like one of her first like things, which is so crazy. But now she's like this huge, huge stylist. See what you did? You started her on the road. Ah, <laughs> I, we're just lucky that we got to work with her. <laughs> got you, got you. Then from 2012 to 2015, three years. Wow, you were Holly and Rosalie on the hit TV show Scandal. Yeah, that was awesome. Scandal was. <laughs> so much fun um scandal was one of those jobs that i it's the only well it's the, it was the first time it's happened a couple of times but it was the first time that um anyone ever gave me a job without me having to audition for it it was a straight offer uh my i i had worked on shondaland shows before i had done Grey's anatomy i had done private practice uh and i had become close with linda lowey the casting director and my best friend who's my co-artistic director of i am katie lowes who played mm-hmm. Quinn Perkins on Scandal. Um, Shonda had known of my work and I got a call from Linda Lowy one day out of the blue and said, hey, there's this role, Shonda wants you to play it. And I was like, oh my God, of course, yes, please. And it turned into seven episodes. And I turned into, not only was I this like gal Friday for Josh Molina, but then there was a great twist and it turned out I was a B613 agent and I was a murderer and I was this like awesome killer spy. and. Uh, and then I did get, I did get killed, got fully shot me in the face and down I went, but, uh, it was, that was an amazing, amazing time. Um, and it's a fantastic show to have been on great crew, great cast, just an awesome, awesome experience. Every time we hear anybody talk about Shonda Rhimes, it's always beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. If you see her before I see her, we've been trying to get her on this show (laughs) for the longest time. The studio that we work at right now, right now I'm in my home because of the situation. Mm -hmm. But we, we had a studio uh, over on Sunset and Gower. We were oh, on yeah. the first floor. She was on the third floor. They wouldn't let us get on the third floor. <laughs> I never could get to her. I tried, well, believe me, I tried. She's, a, she's amazing. I mean, she's like one of my guardian angels. I mean, yeah. the, the support she's given to me personally as an artist, but then to Iama. I mean, we yes. couldn't, I couldn't be more grateful. And right. I, think, I think she is just one of the most amazing women ever. Hello, my name is Ron Brewington. She might. I'll let her know. I'll hook you up. All right, Shonda, you, you heard that. Ron Brewington. <laughs> Madam, have you ever done a soap opera? I haven't, but you know what? I really wanted to because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with soaps. Uh-huh. I was one of those people who actually bought Soap Opera Digest, and I would read that thing cover to cover. Um, and right before I moved to Los Angeles, the last uh, big audition I had in New York was actually for a contract role in Guiding Light. And I, I had a couple callbacks for it and I thought it was going to happen. And if it had, I probably wouldn't have been able to move to LA. Yes. Um, but I, I say fortunately, because I'm so glad that I ended up here. I did not get that part. And then I was able to make the move the next week. And that was, that was the closest I came to being on a soap. But I would love to be on a soap. I think it's a great workout for actors. Yes, it is. And a steady money, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Absolutely. Right. I, over the, this show has taught me a lot of different things. I understand that actors and actresses like to do short stuff so that they can get a stage thing going, you know, when they're not working, they can be stage as well. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I would love to be on, you know, a sitcom for seven years yeah. that just goes forever. And that feels like a wonderful job. But I think, you know, it's great to be able to have a job where you know when it's starting, when it's ending, and you know what else you can do in between. Because like most artists, you know, you want a variety. You want to continuously be inspired. And at least for me, as I'm, you know, not just an actor, but also a director and a writer as well. So i to sneak this question in. What roles do you look for? Oh, um, I think the thing I'm most attracted to are roles where um, there's a surprise. I like to play characters that you wouldn't expect me to be. That's why Scandal was so exciting when they gave me that twist. Um, I really love playing high functioning intellectual professionals, lawyers, DAs, things like that. Uh, someone who's the smartest person in the room, but maybe 
you don't realize that because you know people I look a little bit young for how old I actually am and I look sweet but you know I've got a bite 18 right 18 absolutely over 18 as they say over 18 (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but that's a good and I and I look for material that's got a lot of meat to it um thing seams that give you time and space to to breathe and really do the work um this is us was like a dream job because of that then in 2014, you got your first IMDb, toot horns, toot horns, folks, director credit, <laughs> film storytellers, a woman director, another one, fellas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, directing was absolutely just the next natural step for me. I right. went to school for acting and directing theater, but I really was focusing on acting. And the more I was auditioning and the more I was looking at material and I'd be on set and I just was so interested in being able to be there to help facilitate. And, and I was teaching acting and I was coaching and that was just a natural um, next step for me was to direct. And I had a play, a short play that I'd actually written and had, I am a produce. And I just felt like that story needed so much more life. And I thought that it, it had to be told on the screen. So I adapted it and I got a crew together and I raised money with the help of um, a, a dear friend, Jackie Phillips, who helped produce it. Um, and then we we made that short and went to a bunch of festivals, and that's kind of how everything got started. All right. Well, guess what? We just happen to have a clip of storytelling. Oh, good. <laughs> Welcome to Magical Castle. What mystical meal can I get for you today? That's the wrong one. That, we're going that one. Come on. Come on. Get this fire. Fly that's fire fly catcher, yeah. Okay, he's, he's finding he's rolling it back, getting it back on there. All good. Right Amazing. <laughs> the work that you guys can do in this town is just marvelous. That's what I love about this town. This business. I used to be a critic for a long time. I used to be on the on the junket circuit. I mm. spent about I spent about sixteen years on that. That was a lot of fun. So a lot. Oh, of fun. Wow, I bet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's let's move on. Can you go ahead okay. and try to use the Firefly way because that's another one that she also directed. Firefly. The firefly catching. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, low carb. Bell's Beauty Burger is our princess patty wrapped in lettuce. Yeah. Okay, I'll take one of those and a uh, large order of the beast fries. You know, those are fries with chili and cheese on them. Yeah, and it says it's got sour cream too, right? The dialogue is beautiful. Got I love that, that, too, right? <laughs> that scene did not was not supposed to be anything huge, but that actor was so fascinating, and he made such interesting choices that I just wanted to see more of it. So we just stretched it out. Um, but um, yeah, that was a great that was a great story. I really I really loved that film. Um, that was uh, that was the first time that I was directed. I was hired to direct something that I hadn't written, so it was really exciting. Indeed. Here's a good question for you. Why is it that a lack of women directors is such a big thing? Would you mind telling me what that is? Uh, fear. Fear and fear of lack of control. I have no idea. I do have no idea why there aren't more female directors. I don't know why there's not more equity when it comes to that. Um, I'm part of this wonderful collective called Film Fatales, which is um, a collective international of female directors, um, women who have uh, either directed a a uh, feature film or an episode of television. And then there's also producers and editors and all other kinds of artists in this group. But, um, and they work towards that equity, towards having more uh, women in, in directing roles um, in major you know, film, television and theater. Um, it's really geared towards film, but um, I, don't, I don't understand it. To be honest, I think um, that people are afraid of taking risks when it comes to money sometimes. And they're afraid that they think that experience equates talent. And I think that if you have a great crew and great people around you, a director who is a first time director, all it takes is that one time for them to understand the way that show works. And then they can, they're off to the races. I think also people need to trust that you, you can go from film to television because you can bring in ideas and things that people hadn't thought of and that skill set. Um, and so I, I think that uh, it, I really, I do think it's based on, on this fear um, and that, People are comfortable with the way things have been done. But as we know right now, like we're in a time of change and nobody's comfortable. And we need to shake it up, burn it down, rebuild it. Amen. Do all the things. 
<laughs> I think it's that three letter word, ego. You know, ego. No, what's that word? Ego. <laughs> oh, ego, yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Joe walks in and out the door every five seconds. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We have to fight it all the time. We have to, yeah. like, you know, women, sometimes we have to be louder and more aggressive and we right. have to push the, we have to break those doors down and we have to smash through that ceiling. Get the baseball bat, get the baseball bat. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, let's see. We talked about that. Tell me a little, okay. Tell me a little bit about IAMA. First of all, what does IAMA stand for? <laughs> okay. So it is pronounced I am a, and right. it literally just means I am a theater company. It does not stand for anything. It just means I am a theater company because we're all a theater company. So we were very creative when we <laughs> came up with this name. We actually, we thought we were actually quite clever and then it turned out that it does confuse people, but, but it really does mean I am a theater company. It doesn't stand for anything. Wow. So it's us just making a statement about we're here. This is what we're doing. This is who we are. And there's been, a, I, I remember there was an I'm, uh, I'm a project called Canyon that unfortunately had to shut down. Can you tell us about that? Um, well, Canyon, so Canyon's had a, a great history. Um, we first did a workshop production of this in 2012. Is you on no, that, that, I lied, not 2012. Um, sorry, yeah. 2017. It was 2017, I believe. Um, and then we did the full production um, in 2019. I'm thinking this right. Yes, 19, uh, that we co-produced with the um, Latino Theater Company at the Los Angeles Theater Center. But then this uh, spring in um, April of 2020, we were supposed to remount this production at the Kirk Douglas Theater with Center Theater Group as part of Block Party. And that is what got shot, uh, shut down. We unfortunately had to close, or we didn't even start. We were, everything was shut down about um, three or four days before our first day of rehearsal, which was a huge bummer. We missed a lot of stuff, didn't we? We, yeah, we've missed a lot of wonderful theater. I am actually, we had our first ever musical that was in production. We were three yeah. weeks in and we had to close that. Um, but Canyon is just an incredible play, very timely written by company member, John Karen. Um, I've been a part of that play since the first reading we ever did in Katie Lowe's living room. And it is, it's just a really important play that really delves into uh, Los Angeles, the people, the families, the stories that come from here. Um, and I was really proud of this production and I was really looking forward to doing it again. So I don't know what the future holds for it though. Guess what? We just happen to have a small clip <laughs> of that play. Canyon, can you roll it there, Tony? Yeah, actually, oh, I'll go back eventually. But a mother should be with her infant through its first three years. And they're so, so cute. <laughs> I know, I see them all the time on the ground. Uh, hey, what can I say? I love having half black babies. I win. <laughs> uh, so why, uh, <laughs> now who was that standing in the middle of the stage who was that uh, that's me yeah that's me. Uh, i love that role i mean she's a challenging person unfortunately i i do think that she is a karen but i think as we're learning that there's a lot of karens out there gotcha. um uh but i i really enjoyed um bringing that role to life and getting to be on stage with Christine Woods, who's just one of the best actresses out there, was such an honor. Okay. Got a couple more minutes, just want to bring one thing out. Sure. I am a 2021. Got a logo, there's a logo, mm -hmm. but it means something special. Tell us, please. So we have decided that we are not, you know, closing our, we're, our doors might be closed physically, but we're not shutting down. We're going to keep going. So we are putting our entire season online. We're doing a completely virtual season starting in December, uh, where we will be um, live capturing in theater spaces, but without an audience to be viewed on demand, uh, a season of solo performance pieces. So we have um, brand new productions that are written and performed by Tom Detrinis, Sheila Carrasco, Anala Madrid, and Brandon Kyle Goodman. And uh, I could be more excited for us to bring theater into people's homes in a way that still feels theatrical, but is incredibly accessible. Um, and as we move you know, towards the future, accessibility is so important in people being able to experience art right now. So um, I'm really proud and excited that we're gonna be able to do this. Great, we got a great publisher. She told us how do you get tickets and streaming information. I'll go, you'll go to our website just follow you can follow us on instagram and twitter i am a theater go to our website i am a theater.com theater with an re 
Uh, and you can also sign up for our newsletter there at the website where you can get up-to-date information about tickets and how to view all of our stuff. Uh, we do have an event coming up this weekend. Can I plug that? Okay. We have our annual New Works Festival, which is starting uh, this Thursday, the 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, going towards the 25th, we have six readings, all new plays in four days. You can go to the website, iamatheater.com to RSVP. It's all free, open to the public. Um, all the readings are through a uh, Zoom webinar. So please much, check them out. There's really, really exciting um, work happening. How much are tickets? Free, tickets are free. <gasps> All, all, free. <laughs> all free all free all free all yeah. right wow now on april 30th of next year you'll be directing what the latrell show until june 6th i am going to be collaborating with a another director to be announced on the latrell show which is um a new performance piece by brandon kyle goodman who is a phenomenal artist he's an incredible writer and actor and activist um if you want to check him out you can he has a new podcast called black folks folks, F-O-L-X, uh, that you can listen to anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Um, okay. He's just an incredible person. So check out that new piece. Stephanie, I want to thank you for your being here today. We really appreciate your presence. Best wishes. Special thank thanks you. out to Lucy Powell. Wow. <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you so right. much for coming in. Thank well, you. Thank Have you. a good day. Bye. You too. Thanks to our sponsors, Harvey Raman, Photography as an Art, Ron Irwin's Haiku Style, Passion, Heart, Larry Buford's book to the future, time travel, message in a capsule, state farm agent Carla Green and veteran actor Rob Brownstein, actor training school and actor stage. And much, much thanks to our guest today, actor, director, playwright, Levy Lee Simon, and actress, director, writer, Stephanie Black. And of course, special thanks to our ever, ever, ever growing audience. Be well, we'll see you next time.